Revelation chapter 19. The themes of this chapter include heaven's praise to God at the judgment of the great whore, the marriage supper of the Lamb, and Christ's return to earth on a white horse at the battle of Armageddon. Heaven will praise God for finally judging the great whore, Mystery Babylon, the Roman Catholic Church, as seen in verses 1 through 6. God was so patient with this idolatrous woman or church, even giving her space to repent over 1,000 years, but she repented not. Though she was guilty of the blood of God's prophets and servants, all of them had to wait upon the timing of God for him to pour out his vengeance. For vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, as Revelation 12 verse 19 says. And Revelation chapter 17 and 18 gave us a powerful look at the destruction of Rome and the Vatican. Recall that God doesn't delight in the death of the wicked. Ezekiel 33 verse 11 states this plainly. But just as with Sodom and Gomorrah, the just and fair God had to pour out his wrath due to repeated disobedience. We see the same repeated disobedience of the Roman Catholic Church refusing to repent for over 1,000 years, turning down God's reformers like Martin Luther and John Wesley, and more recently, God's prophet, Brother William Branham. The marriage supper of the Lamb is revealed in verses 7 through 10, and we learn that the Lamb, Jesus Christ, has a wife, which we know is the New Testament, Holy Ghost-filled Gentile church, according to Ephesians 5, verse 32, and Acts 15, verse 14. This marriage supper will be a time likened unto a wedding reception for Christ and his wife and will include a glorious time of communion as taught in Matthew 26, verse 29. While Jesus' bride is having communion, the earth and the remainder of its inhabitants who did not receive the Holy Ghost are being purged during the awful Great Tribulation period. Christ's return to earth on a white horse at the Battle of Armageddon is detailed in verses 11 through 21, which is the public universal event of Christ's visible return to earth for his second coming at the end of the tribulation period. For the scripture says that every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. According to Revelation 1, verse 7. Revelation chapters 14 and 16 also detail the battle of Armageddon as all men gather in vain to make war against the Lamb. As the sword of the Lord proceeds from the mouth of Christ and slays all the disobedient, blasphemous men. This is the stone cut out of the mountain event of Daniel 2 verse 35. The symbols and key revelations include the wife of the Lamb, the fine linen, clean and white garments, he that sat upon a white horse, the armies upon white horses, and the beast and the false prophet. The wife of the Lamb is the Holy Ghost-filled New Testament church because without the Spirit of Christ, a person is none of his, according to Romans 8, verse 9. John the Baptist taught that Jesus was the bridegroom who had a bride in John 3, verse 29. And Ephesians 5.32 plainly states that the church is the bride or wife of Jesus Christ. Much more scripture could be used to support this, but recall the Gentile church was called out to God as a people for his name, according to Acts 15 verse 14, which fits the symbolism of a husband taking a wife and then the wife takes the name of her husband. The fine linen, clean and white garments of the wife of Jesus are symbolic of the Holy Ghost baptism, which is eternal life. Because Revelation 19 verse 8 called it the righteousness of the saints, and Titus 2 verse 5 states that the washing and regenerative powers of the Holy Ghost are not by our righteousness, but God's righteousness. Jesus' parable of the wedding feast and the man without the wedding garment in Matthew 22 verses 1 through 14 is further support of this interpretation as the garment represents the believer was born again with the righteousness and power of the Holy Ghost. In Luke 24, verse 49, Jesus stated that the Holy Ghost would be an experience of power endued, which means clothing. So it would be clothing or putting on of Jesus' power. 
God's prophet, Brother Branham, says the white robe represents eternal life, which is scriptural, as the fifth seal shows the Jews receiving eternal life or white robes. And this is true because they denied Christ while on earth because they were blinded to him, as Romans chapter 11 says. So the Jews could not have eternal life while blinded to Christ as the Messiah. But once in heaven, the blindness was removed, and now Jesus can give them eternal life because they were faithful to the word of God and the testimony that they held. Also regarding white raiment, Revelation 3 verse 5 and 3 verse 18 proves this white raiment is available now, just like it was available during the Sardis church age as Revelation 3 verse 4 says. According to 2 Corinthians 5 verse 3, Paul says a soul without eternal life is found naked. And again, this is just like the Jews under the fifth seal in Revelation chapter 6, who had to be given white robes. Brother Ram taught this in the Sardesian Church Age, chapter, chapter 7 of the Church Age book, quote, It is the second resurrection that the souls under the altar are set forth in the fifth seal, Revelation 6, verses 9 through 11, are given white robes, and of course, eternal life, or there would be no point of white robes, end quote. He that sat upon a white horse is a key revelation from Revelation 19, verse 11 of the second coming of Jesus Christ to the earth. Jesus only is faithful and true, as he is called faithful two more times in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 5, and chapter 3, verse 14. Christ also has eyes as a flame of fire, as spoken previously in Revelation 1, verse 14. Christ is called the Word of God in Revelation 19, verse 13, and John 1, verses 1 through 3, and verse 14. Christ is also called the King of Kings and Lord of Lords in Revelation 19, verse 16, and 1 Timothy 6, verse 15, and Revelation 17, verse 14. At this second coming of Jesus Christ to the earth, Christ slays all men in his righteous judgment, officially ending the day of man, as he makes ready for the Lord's day, fulfilling the times of the Gentiles' prophecy of the stone cut out of the mountain from Daniel chapter 2, verses 31 through 45. The armies upon white horses is a revelation that reveals the true nature of the Holy Ghost-filled New Testament church. Every born-again Christian is a soldier, as 2 Timothy 2, verse 3 says, and lives their lives on earth battling spiritual wickedness in high places, as Ephesians 6, verse 12 states. The Christian soldier puts on the full armor of God in order to stand against the wiles or deceit of Satan. See Ephesians 6, verses 11 through 18. Every Holy Ghost-filled Christian is a spiritual king who rules over sin, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Also, it is a blessed revelation about these armies riding white horses as these horses came down from heaven, proving that heaven has a place for animals. Revelation 7, verse 4, and Ezekiel 1, verse 10, prove that there are living creatures in heaven that resemble a lion, ox, and flying eagle. 2 Kings 2, verse 11 also reveals there were horses of fire in heaven, for the chariot of fire and horses of fire are what took Elijah to heaven by a whirlwind. The beast and the false prophet Pope are revealed as the following. The beast is the evil spirit or power of the past ancient Roman Empire and current kingdom of Rome, according to Daniel 7, verse 23, or Roman Catholic Church. The false prophet is closely connected to the beast or spirit of Rome and is called a man. Since a prophet is one who speaks for God, we conclude that the one man who claims to speak for God and is false in his doctrine and is closely connected to the spirit of Rome is the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church. Both the beast and the false prophet will be cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, according to Revelation 19, verse 20. See part three of our video series called Mystery Babylon, the Roman Catholic Church, for more teaching on the false prophet, or see chapter nine of my 2021 book, The Twelve New Testament Mysteries Revealed. The timing of events is as follows. The marriage supper of the Lamb will happen in heaven, while the judgments of God are being poured upon the earth during the seven-year tribulation period. This is proven from the parable of Jesus from Matthew 25, verse 10, as it reveals all those without the oil or baptism of the Holy Ghost are kept out of the marriage 
which represents the marriage supper of the Lamb. Revelation chapter 22, verse 13, is a second witness that shows a person without the wedding garment, which is again a symbol of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, will be kept out of the wedding or marriage and cast into outer darkness with weeping and gnashing of teeth. And this outer darkness seems to be a description of the suffering involved in the seven-year tribulation period, as we see in Revelation 16, verse 10. And all those who suffer wrath during the great tribulation who are not the foolish virgin will also be cast in the lake of fire and have even more weeping and gnashing of teeth, according to Matthew 24, verse 51. The timing of the Battle of Armageddon seems to follow the Vatican's destruction at the end of the tribulation period as there are men alive and weeping at Rome's destruction in Revelation chapter 18. But all men gather to Armageddon and are slain there, according to Revelation 19, verse 18. If you would like more Bible scriptures, quotations, or if you have any questions about the book of Revelation, please contact us. God bless you, and may Jesus Christ be the desire of your heart.